Hey everybody, it's that time again. It's time for a diary of a physicist farm gal, and this is episode number 38. My name is Deborah, and I'm coming to you from here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks, where I like to do all the crafts. I knit, I crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I make jewelry. I'll try any craft once and twice if I like it. <laughs> and I'm also a professor of physics and astronomy at a local university where I teach classes to physics majors, also general education level classes, and I volunteer doing planetarium shows for school groups and community groups, and I'm also very involved in women in STEM activities. Yay! National International Women's Day is today, and there's lots of cool science ladies out there that you can learn about. I'm going to post lots of links, don't worry. And last but not least, I am a farmer. I am a third generation family farmer that I'm on this land that my family has lived on for over a century. And where I raise beef cattle, I also raise horses. I have heritage poultry. I have show quality rabbits. And I am home to a retirement herd of miniature horses, miniature donkeys, donkeys, and a miniature pumpkin, pumpkin, a miniature pumpkin, a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules the roost. And a pot valley pig named Penny Pig. We'll get to that in a short little minute. <laughs> and last but not least, with my sweet little co-host Willie here, I am fur kid mom to 14 dogs and 7 indoor cats and an undetermined number of outside barn cats. So if any or of all of that sounds good to you, I hope you'll come along with us on episode number, it is not 37, it is 38. I can't even count. 38 of Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. If you're looking for us on social media, my farm Facebook page is the same as my YouTube channel name. It's Buckthorn Farms. You can also find me personally on Instagram and Ravelry as Doc Firewoman. If you look, there is a Ravelry group for the podcast called Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal where you can find about any make-alongs or giveaways or just engage in some general chit-chat with the community over there. Uh, I am also a part of the Crocheting Hoovians VKN group that meets on Friday nights. If you'd like to know more about that, you can contact me, and I will give you all the details on that. Uh, and last but not least, I am also on Twitter, but I am a fairly left-leaning, socially liberal uh, Democrat, and so uh, that's where I vent all my political frustrations. I keep it as at a dull roar elsewhere, but... I cut loose on Twitter, so if that kind of stuff gives you high blood pressure, probably better not follow me on Twitter. <laughs> I want to welcome all the new viewers. We've had a few new people join in with us, and I want to sure thank all y'all that are coming back. I appreciate y'all coming back so much time and time again to see what me and Willie are up to. So um, we're going to get on here and talk about a few make-alongs and giveaway winners. I have a giveaway winner to announce. So um, February 28th was my podiversary. I was not able to podcast because I was actually at the National Severe Storms Lab. That's the Flying Cow Cafe there in the shirt. Um, with my, my class, my meteorology class, and I'll talk more about that in the science segment. Um, but... That was my podiversary, one year of doing this, who'd, not, who'd have thunk it? I never had any idea that after a year I would have made so many wonderful uh, friends in the community and feel like I'm actually contributing something substantive uh, to the community. And maybe it's a little different, it's not for everybody, but I sure am glad for those of y'all who like it. So I had a prompt on uh, Ravelry about what... Would you like to see and know more about in future podcasts? And a lot of the response was, we want to know more about the farm and the animals and uh, some of my DIY stuff. So um, if you have found us, maybe you have found our Critter Chat videos. And then also, I started a DIY channel or um, folder, whatever, playlist. Yeah, that's it. I started that uh, where I can do some DIY videos. They're not going to be great because I'm by no means a professional quality podcaster, but I will try to impart what I have learned. I'm by no means an expert on a lot of the things I'm talking about either, but um, I will try to impart what I have learned. And the first one was about me pressure canning chicken broth or turkey broth, and it was mostly... Um, to, to kind of take away some of the mis mystery and fear of using a pressure canner. Because I know a lot of people, all they think of is that video or that footage of that 
lid stuck in the ceiling. And while you can do that, you have to work at it to do that. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. Y'all want to know who won, right? So using random number generator, the Podiversary winner for our um, post, or for this post number 22, Emily Marianne. So the Podiversary prize winner, which was random assorted fun goodies, is Emily Marianne. So if you will contact me through Ravelry and give me your mailing address, I will get that in the mail to you sooner rather than later, I promise. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some, quickly talk about my make-alongs and then we'll go through uh, some of those of my friends. So my first make-along is the Farmer's Almanac make-along where we are aiming to make things that inspire us about the particular month that we're in. I spend some time every month writing a fairly lengthy uh, post about just different things that I have gleaned from the Farmer's Almanac and also other sources. Um, and so there are lots of ways you can come at this. Um, if you can just make the case for how this relates to the month of March that we're in right now, then you will qualify for an entry in that make along. And then at the end of the year, I'm going to have an FO thread. So you don't have to finish your objects in the month. Okay. Uh, you just post one whip photo per week of your, if, uh, per project. So if you have more than one project, you can post how many ever whips you have going that are related to the post. Um, and then at the end of the year, there'll be an FO thread. And I'll probably open that pretty soon because people are starting to finish items that they need. And all that'll be in there. The next one is the Creature Feature, which I am jointly hosting with Laura from A Crocheting Whovian, where we are aiming to make amigurumis. And we're having themes. Now, you don't have to follow the theme, but this, this quarter's theme, as you can see from my little friend Octavia, who's hanging out with me back here, is under the sea, so sea creatures. Uh, and I'm pretty broad-minded about that. Penguins, puffins, seagoing birds, things like that would qualify. But you can make anything. You make a, you know, you want to make a panda bear. You get an entry. You just don't get a double entry for your FO, okay? So, but you can post one whip photo per week plus double pictures on your FOs for the quarterly pattern prize. And then, I'll, again, I'll open an FO thread probably at the end of March when that quarter is up. Uh, next, co-hosting jointly with Vanessa from the uh, A Historian Knits podcast. We are running the I Like Big Shawls and I Cannot Lie, which is a knit-along only. A knit along only. Uh, I forgot to mention the Farmer's Almanac is any craft. Any craft at all. Wide open. Whatever you want to do. Um, the amigurumis can be knit, crochet, or loom. The big shawls one has to be knitted. Knitted only. And it has to contain 1,200 yards plus of yarn. Okay? And we've got a bundle of patterns there that Vanessa curated for us. Uh, next, I have the Kitter Getter Done, where we are aiming to make up kits of things. So, I hoard kits like a dragon sitting on gold, and so um, I am trying to work through some of them. I am trying to shop my craft room. For the most part, I did buy myself a few treats because it's tax return season. I put most of my tax return back into the farm, as you'll hear later. But I did set aside a little bit for myself to have some treats um, besides new shoes and new underpants. <laughs> Um, but kits, kits, kits. Let's get these kits made up. Uh, no point, in, no point in hiding them. We might as well get them out and make them and enjoy them, right? And then the last one for me is never have I ever. So this is where we're learning new things. It can be a new technique. It can be a new craft. Um, so pretty wide open there, as long as you can make the case for. Um, what you're doing. Same thing with the kit or get her done. Any kind of kit, shawl kit, cross stitch kit. Like I said, not a professional podcaster. <laughs> oh Lord, I knew that was going to happen. Okay, there we go. Oh, that lighting is terrible. I'll have to fix that in a minute. But anyway, so whatever kits you can get made up, um, doesn't matter what it is. So the make-alongs are pretty flexible. The rules are all posted in my Ravelry group. And I'm going to cut this and try to fix the lot and come back and finish. Okay, so now that we've had the hallelujah course and I've kind of fixed the lighting situation, although I'm podcasting a little bit later today, so the light is not so not so hot. And Willie's trying to have, is having trouble getting situated here. Okay, so some of our, uh, my friends that are hosting other uh, pod, or other uh, make-alongs, 
they've still got a little bit to say apparently to whatever they were barking about i'm going to go through these kind of in the order that they are on ravelry to try to make it a little maybe i won't forget somebody first one is a historian knits vanessa who is hosting the big shawls uh, make along with me she is also hoping hosting a cowl cow <laughs> Um, it is a, a knitted, knitter crochet, okay, knitter crochet, and whips are included, and it is cowl patterns, and so it is running from March 1 to June 1, so over in her group, she is running the cowl cowl, where you can go and make cowls, and I have several that I want to get made, so hopefully I will get, uh, get those done. Okay, next up is... Uh, a crocheting Hoovian is hosting a creature feature with me, but she's also hosting a whip it, whip it good uh, uh, make along where you can finish whips. Okay, any whips that you were starting prior to March 1st, okay, prior to March 1st, then you can finish them. And frogging old whips is accepted. Projects must have been started prior to March 1st, and you all you have to have a project page for everything on Ravelry. If it's a large project, you need to indicate progress and so on, and basically it runs through the end of the year. Okay, so uh, she's taking sewing and cross-stitch in that, so lots of opportunities to finish some whips, and I blame her for my extremely, extremely exorbitant number of whips, because I went a little whip wild and you'll see that in a little bit we are trust me i ain't gonna show y'all of them because y'all would be gone and in bed by the time i got done but anyway moving on <laughs> okay the next one up is um let me see do, do, do. i'm just being this way should have made a list but i didn't da, da, da. <laughs> uh knick knack knits has her um Gnome knit along, and the gnome knit along is uh, where you're making a gnome kit where you can knit or crochet a gnome, and it is running March 1st through March 1st, so March 1st, 2019 to March 1st, 2020. Um, and she has some suggestions about patterns and yarn there. She also has a scrappy um, cow cow, which I believe ends. Uh, let's see, I don't know when that, I don't know if it's running through the end of the year. Yeah, it's running through the end of the year, and she's doing quarterly prizes. And then she has a socket to me cow where you can finish a sock. So if you have a lot of single socks that need to be pairs of socks, that is your opportunity. Because every single sock, not every pair, but every sock is an entry. Um, okay, so uh, next up is uh, Two Sticks and String Podcast. She is running a, a make-along called Thank You for Being a Friend, which is Golden Girls Inspired. So Golden Girls Inspired Patterns, Golden Girls Inspired Yarn, fairly fairly laid-back rules if you go read about that. And that is uh, running, I believe, until March 31st, so you still have time to get in on that. And um, a new podcast that I will tell you about is uh, Vanilla Sock Pig. Vanilla Sock Pig is a friend from the virtual knitting group, Stephanie. And she loves to knit socks, as the name implies, but she is running the Multiple Myeloma Cow, or Cow Cow, it's crochet and knit, because she is in a, she has cancer, I, plasmocytoma, I believe, or osteocytoma is what she has, but that is a type of cancer that can turn into multiple myeloma. So she is running a, a knit along based on expanding the knowledge of multiple myeloma awareness so um you can go over there and read her rules one of my whips is i'm going to put in her uh or her um knit along so um you know and it's helping her lift up her spirits to battle this insidious cancer that she has pin hook and needles has a few different ones they have the tea and tails uh, knit along which runs through the end of the year where you either have to relate your project to tea or tales as in stories uh, Ready set go I believe ends at the end of March So the ready set go make along ends at the end of March, but you still have time to get in there The project has to have been started after the first of the year so um, also um, Heidi from undead yarn is running a um, a um, cow called finish it or frog it 
where it's basically like the whip it where you're going to work through your projects and uh, finish them. Okay, so uh, it has to be a project page with the beginning date and then uh, you can post your whip. So uh, all of those people are running different knit alongs. Lots of ways to double dip and I strongly encourage double dipping. Okay, we've only got so many hours in the day and some of us are not ninja knitters <laughs> like Stephanie. Um, <laughs> who is a ninja knitter. Uh, so, um, some of us are slow knitters, so I encourage y'all to double dip. So, I believe that that is all of the make-alongs that I'm aware of. If I forgot any, I sure am sorry, and I'll try to pick y'all up next time. But now, we're going to move on and talk about my finished objects, because I have a couple to show this week. Okay, I have a three, well, two finished objects and a quasi-finished object this week to show. The first one is I finished my little penguin. I need to put his pom-pom. I got some red pom-poms that I'm going to glue on his hat. But I finished my little penguin. This was a kit from Lion Brand Yarns. You got the pattern and enough yarn to make two penguins. So my friend Carol has the other yarn to make herself a penguin because she is interested in learning to make amigurumi so i thought well this will be a good kit to start although it is a little bit challenging crocheting on this fuzzy gray yarn but um i i, I think he's just adorable as can be i've got to put his little pom-pom on there and then he will be complete so i'll let him sit down right there and i would count him for an under the sea creature in my portion of the cow cow so uh because penguins are ocean going birds so i would count it okay Next, I finished my January submission for my Farmer's Almanac Make Along. This is my Simple Chevron Stripe Scarf by Karen Rodriguez. And I finished this. Uh, it is specially designed for a self-striping sock yarn. So this sock yarn is a colorway called Hawking Radiation by String Theory Color Works. And I love her yarn. I've talked about it several times. And this qualifies for my January uh, make-along because Stephen Hawking's birthday was in January. So this would be my January submission. So if I were to open an FO thread for myself, then this would be one of my entries. It's just a very simple... Uh, you know, the way you work it up is this gives you the chevron stripes. You don't really get bored, though, because you're constantly changing colors. So this was a great project to carry, carry to class or before class to sit around. And I actually jokingly asked my uh, physics class the other day, could y'all tell me how many different projects I've worked on? <laughs> And they're like, well, do you even know? And I'm like, oh, yes, I can tell you exactly what I've done, who wrote the pattern, and what color the yarn is. <laughs> but it's a great conversation starter. And that was one of the things I learned in an inclusivity workshop. It's neat to go to class a little bit early and establish rapport with students. So sitting, knitting, and crocheting before class is a good way to uh, engage them in conversation because a lot of times they'll come up and ask me about it. So this is my finished object um, for that. So let's put that to the side here. Then my quasi-finished object is I completed another block for my um, marine life blanket. This is block 13 of 20 and I completed my jellyfish block. Okay. So my little, this is corner to corner crochet. This pattern is free on the Two Hearts Crochet um, website. If you go to her website, she has a ton of free amigurumi patterns and Afghan patterns. Uh, so she released the blanket initially with 12 blocks and then she gave us like nine bonus blocks. And I was like, oh, I've got to make some of those. So I ended up picking out uh, seven plus I drew my own narwhal block. So got my jellyfish finished and now I'm going to start the next block and I'll talk about that in future crafting. So those are my finished objects for this week. So now let's move on and talk about whips and y'all hold on. It's going to be a ride. <laughs> Okay, because of Laura's <laughs> influence, <laughs> I'm not going to blame her. I do this sometimes anyway. Um, I decided I would cast on a whole bunch of stuff. And then I would pick one or two or three projects to focus on to finish at a time. And that's how I think I, I am definitely, definitely a process crafter. I do not like to be under deadlines for product knitting unless they're fairly generous. I have noticed that does not work at all for me and I very rarely meet them. <laughs> so um, 
you know, my gift knitting takes all year. And um, we'll talk more about that as I get into, into more of my gift knitting. But I sat down one weekend. Excuse me, let me put these out of the way. I sat down one weekend and organized my patterns in a queue on Ravelry, which I know is a grown-up thing to do, aren't y'all proud? <laughs> and I uh, picked out some things that I wanted to make that I had yarn for, because again, I was trying to shop stash. Um, and then I picked out some things that I wanted to make that I would have to purchase yarn for, and I allowed myself a few of those as well. And I just started stuffing patterns and yarns and needles when I had them available in project bags. And I ended up with quite a few. And I went ahead and started everything that I made a project page for. I actually have cast on. It may just be the cast on, but I have it done. I'm not going to show y'all all of them because, again, we'd be here all night and into tomorrow. And, you know, we all need to eat some something good and go to bed. So, I'll show you what my most, my most active ones. Okay, you have seen this already uh, before the cast on itis attack. Uh, in my wonderful little Science Buddies bag here, I have the Adirondack Wrap by Chiwei Rink of One Dog Wolf on um, Instagram and Ravelry. And it was designed to be used with Lion Brand Mandala yarn, okay? Uh, it is a very simple, it would be a great beginner project. So, and y'all are, I'm sure y'all are all familiar with the mandala, but this is the Lion Brand Mandala yarn, and my particular colorway is called Warlock. So, um, I started this as a before class project, you know, something to work on before class or in the planetarium because I can see to do it in the low light of the planetarium. I have finished the first wedge. What you do is you crochet three identical wedges and then you sew them together. So I've completely finished my first wedge. And I have started on my second wedge. And to my students' credit, they said, are you starting a new one of those? And I said, no, it's constructed in this way. And I showed them. So I am this far into the second wedge. Okay. So um, it works up very quickly. It's a very easy pattern. It would be a great beginner pattern for someone and I purchased this kit from Lion Brand and if you pay attention Lion Brand runs some really good sales on their kits so that is my first um, first whip that I'm working on okay um, my second one is and this is a little backpack that I don't know why I chose this I guess just because I needed something quick um, I decided I needed to start replenishing my store of crocheted wash or crocheted knitted washcloths. So um, you know, Amber from the Yarn Hoarder has a knitted washcloth uh, or a washcloth make along that she runs all year. So um, I had some scrap cotton yarn from a, another project, so I decided to cast on. A washcloth and this is something that I'll just pick up before bedtime and put a few rows on it uh, while I'm kind of winding this is stays in my bedroom and I knit on this right before I go to bed to just kind of wind down I'll put a row or two or three on it to just kind of wind down right before I turn out the light so um, and I've got a couple of other skeins of cotton yarn in here but this is just some scrap and I've got some sugar and cream yarn in here uh, so that is one of my um, active whips put my glasses on in case i need to read something here in a minute <laughs> okay all right then uh the next thing that i'm working on is in my little dollar store thrift store i got this at the thrift store it's a little backpack with a uh, pegasus on it rainbow pegasus this is the cutie pie Hazel the Humpback Whale. Hazel the Humpback Whale is a knitted amigurumi. It's by Beck Britain, Britain, Britain. And uh, it's a pattern that's been around a while, so you can read the project pages if you're concerned about stitch counts or want advice. Um, it is, right now, I am knitting it on DPNs, which I'm getting more proficient at. But um, what I love about this is, let me get this fixed around here is you can really start to see the character 
of the humpback quail already when you look at its nose so here's the top of the here's the top of the nose here and then the sides really do give that texture of that humpback whale that characteristic humpback whale face so um this is how far i am not very far in other words but um once I, I feel like I've actually made some distinct progress because it was pretty slow going in the beginning for me because I am not the most coordinated of people and DPNs give me fits. I'll just be honest with y'all. So uh, that's Hazel the Humpback Whale. I'm just knitting her out of some Red Heart yarn because I knit most of my amigurumis out of Red Heart because it's cheap and I can wash it. <laughs> because, and that's imperative for the next one. This is... The Prosperity Pig by Little Bamboo Handmade, Little Bamboo Handmade, and it comes with a dragon dance uh, toy, too. Let me see if I can find the full picture of it here, too. I think it's right here. Yeah, it comes with the dragon dance toy, also, for the Lunar New Year, and this quote was my February project for my Farmer's Almanac Make Along. And it looks a little little morbid because he's a headless pig right now, but he shall tonight he will have a head. <laughs> okay? So this is how far I am. Okay. You don't sew him together, you actually crochet all the parts together. So I'm working on the head just now. Okay. And uh, my arms, Fizzy, my wonderful sweet yarn stealing cat, took off with both my arms, and so they are covered in hair and she carried them all around the house, apparently. So they're a little dirty. So Piggy's going to get a bath as soon as I get finished with him. So getting pretty close on him. Got to finish the head and put the little eyes and put the snout on. Okay. And then I will make the dragon dance toy to go with this. Because I think that will complete the, complete the look. And again, just some simple acrylic uh, yarn that I'm making that out of. Nothing fancy there. Okay. Now, another whip, and I finally got back in the mood to work on this. This is the Gothic Angel Shawl. This was the Halloween uh, Mystery Knit Along for Boo Knits. And this is a beautiful lacy shawl. This is the final picture of it. The pictures have been out for a while. And it is beaded. Uh, this is in my um, Happy Halloween bag by A Magpie Knits. She uh, makes some great bags. And she also dyes some great yarn. So y'all go check her out on Etsy. She's extremely reasonable on her prices. So um, I am almost done with clue one, which is like three charts. Okay. I am knitting this out of Kimmery Knit Knacks Lace Weight, uh, Trinity Lace Weight. And this is a colorway called West Texas Sunset. And I am almost done with the first chart. And let me see if I can show it to y'all without pulling it off my needles. So this is how far I am. So the last time I showed it, it was down where the little dog bone is. And I have added this much. Is that right? That seems like I would have added more than that. I don't know. But anyway, I have, I have added quite a bit since I, or at least in terms of my brain process. I've worked on it a couple of nights, so there's another beaded section in there. And I'm, I'm almost done with clue one. And somebody was looking at this and they said, my gosh, that's a lot of stitch markers. And I said, let me tell you something. This shawl, it will make you a believer in lifelines and stitch markers, let me tell you. Because I'm getting ready to put, I've got two lifelines in, I need to pull this one out, and I'm going to run another one. What I've decided to do is when I get to the end of chart, when I get to the end of clue one, I'm going to put in a lifeline. I'm putting one in about every 20 rows or 15 rows or so. It will make you a believer. <laughs> anyway, so those are my active uh, whips. Uh, let me show you a couple of other things that I have kind of got in the hopper. Um... One of them, I finally started the Year of Lace in the Dog Park. This is in my periodic table bag that Knick Knack Knits made for me. Um, the Year of Lace in the Dog Park is a year-long knit-along, and it's actually a very doable amount of knitting. I just got frustrated at the very beginning and kind of set it aside, but I am finally working on it. 
and I tried starting this on metal D pins and that did not go well. That resulted in me throwing things. <laughs> so I am just barely, barely started, but the fact that I'm started at all and I'm already starting the lace section, the lace charts is somewhat miraculous. <laughs> They have you do this cast on to start in the beginning and then you switch to regular straight needles after this. So once I get through this part, I think I'll be good. But thank goodness that I had bought these wooden uh, DPNs because if I'd had to cast this thing on with those metal ones, it had never happened. I am knitting this out of some um, Cascade Heritage Silk that I had from a swap and then some uh, undyed yarn that I got from Tesla Knits. Okay, so I'm not very far on that because I basically just took it to work with me one day and said, I'm getting this thing cast on if it's the last thing I do. And I got it cast on and got it started to where I felt like I was comfortable. And then I said, okay, put it down and come back to it when you're not tired. Um, so let's see, I'll just show one or two more. I have two, I have two tote bags full of whips, y'all. I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna show y'all of them because I'm not gonna do that to y'all. <laughs> Okay, um, I am knitting, and this was an idea from um, Jessica from the Two Sticks and String podcast. This is a free tabled hat knits pattern called the Bridget Hat. You can get it's a free pattern, and I won some blacker yarns, Falkland Islands DK, um, from the Yarn Crawl, from the Arkansas Yarn Crawl back in October. I wanted from Stephanie's shop, so yay. Uh, and so I have cast on the Bridget hat in this green colorway. And I think it'll be beautiful. Um, so I cast it on for Bridget for February's Farmer's Almanac, but also green for St. Patrick's Day for March. So I need to pick this back up and work it because it is a heavily cabled, quite beautiful quite beautiful hat so that is my other um cast on and that's in my kitty cats moods bag um that i bought in my local yarn shop knit two together it's by a company called fat bottom bags y'all don't google that you'll regret it don't do it <laughs> just i'm just telling i'm just telling you as a friend don't do that uh one more i'll show this is a bag from tesla knits this is my beautiful witchy ladies bag and part of the proceeds of this uh, knit went to the uh, right to dream to foundation out in Portland Oregon and in this um, bag I have one of my cow entries and I'm gonna try to learn to double knit so I've got the kitty cat crowd cowl by Risen Knits and I had two skeins of let lopi that some of my friends, uh, friends of mine brought me back from Iceland. So one of them is kind of a beautiful dark storm blue, kind of like the color of my shirt. And I have got that cast on and I am just starting the double knitting and I don't know if I'm doing it right, but I guess we will see as I go. <laughs> but I'm doing, I am doing what the directions say to do and what the tutorial videos, videos say to do. And I watched the Arne and Carlos video where he Norwegian pearls in double knitting because that's what I do. And so we just gonna roll with it and see what happens. And if it looks bad, we'll just rip it out and make something else, right? Nothing is nothing is forever, especially with ripping out knitting, right? Okay, so that's in my uh, knit bag that I got from Tesla Knits. So that's gonna be all the whips I will show you this week. I won't dig into all the rest of them. So now we're gonna move on and talk just a little bit about future crafting. Okay, uh, in future crafting, I'm going to be fairly brief uh, since I'm kind of running long on some other things this week. Um, the next two blocks I'm going to do on my marine life blanket are the lobster, except I'm going to make him bright blue like that one they found over in the Atlantic a couple years ago, and then the coral block. So I've got the yarns for those. I've just got to get started on those. Uh, those will be my next step on my marine life block. And then I bought some fat quarter packs of some Valentine's Day yarn because I was watching Last Homely House East of the Sea um, 
and she was doing an English paper piece stuffed dog. And I looked at that and I went, hmm, I would like to make that. I've never paper pieced. I may just give up and strip piece a bunch of squares together and call it good. But I think I'm going to try to do some English paper piecing and make it out of this uh, red. And I've got an agenda in mind because I'm thinking, if I make it out of Valentine's Day fabric, can it give me my Valentine's entry for the fair? <laughs> And then I might explore to see if there are some other patterns that I could do because I found some cute Easter fabrics, too. So, um, anyway, these were all fat quarter packs that I picked up um, out at my local big box store. So, those are, those are um, basically the only future crafting that I'm going to talk about this week because, like I said, I'm kind of running long in some other areas. So, we're going to move on and talk a little bit about acquisitions. And I do have a few this week, so we're going to move on now. Okay, so in acquisitions this week, um, I have a few things. Some of them were gifts, and uh, some were purchases. I, uh, Like I said, last year when I first started podcasting, I do a lot of my craft supply buying when I get my tax return, and I kind of plan out what I want to make for the whole year and um, gifts and things like that. So that's what I've done, pretty much. Is I've, That stuff is slowly coming in, and um, I'm not going to probably show everything because that's just ridiculous. Because uh, a lot of it's just big box store, like acrylic or fabric or whatever. But I will show you some, some things that I think are, are neat items. So, um, the first thing that I will uh, show is I got myself a pom-pom maker. And yes, I know, I could have made myself one, but I like gadgets. So, I got myself some clover pom-pom makers. Joanne's Fabrics and Crafts had a 40% off coupon that Shirley gave us all the heads up on. So, we all rushed over there and bought some bought some things and this was one of the things that I got was this pom-pom maker so now I can finish my atomic powered hat yay <laughs> so I can finish my make my pom-pom for it and get that moved into the FO column hopefully by next week when our next time I podcast then I got my next installment of the Leon Alexander Roll for Inspiration uh, yarn club and this was my character Soraya Soraya was a hat was an elven ranger <laughs> if you played D and D and this is the beautiful colorway that he interpreted from what I told her about as a character. And um, I could not be more delighted with this. This is on his 8515 base. It's fingering weight. And so if you're not familiar with his yarn, please do check out. Uh, please do check him out because he makes some beautiful yarn. Uh, he wanted to do something natural but dark. And he said the blue reminds him of the sky. And he said it should spiral if I knit socks out of it. But I think that is way too pretty to put on my feet. So I'm going to make something like a shawl or a cowl with it. So uh, that was my treat um, purchase. Um, then I was sitting at dinner or lunch with some a young some with Miss Marianne's family, and Rory was there. And uh, she has been writing bows some for me. And we were, I was showing her some of the, we, we found out we both enjoy the Try Guys videos on YouTube. And we also both like to collect pins. And we also found out we have a common interest in Star Trek. So I was delighted and we both are fans of the original series. So the Clever Clove had just posted these adorable pins that say, Live Long and Prosper. And so I ordered two, one for me and one for Rory. <laughs> so I haven't seen her to give that to her yet, but um, I will give that to her as soon as, as soon as I see her next. Okay, so um, next up, I am actually a patron on Patreon of the geocaching vlogger, Joshua Johnson. And he is a very nice man. I've met him and his family. They came to my birthday they came to my birthday uh, dinner when we were out in Colorado, and he really does the geocaching community proud. And he sent me a gift of his trackable keychain. And if you don't know what trackables are in geocaching, that means there's a unique number on the back of this that it only belongs to my trackable. And then he also sent me his path tag. So I got those as a nice present in the mail. So I'm sure he doesn't watch this, but thank you, Joshua. Um, you are an inspiration and make me want to start geocaching seriously again. So I'm, I'm probably going to do some of that over spring break. Well, what? <laughs> 
Charmed and Dangerous got me again. Noelle's little charms, and I'm going to have to put myself on a on a, a hiatus from buying these for a while, but they are adorable, and I don't need them, but I want them, so I'll buy them. Uh, Noelle had a very, very sweet St. Patrick's Day update where she made a little St. Patrick's Day hedgie. And his little pot of gold and his little hat. Then she had the Panda Bear Cupcake. And y'all, this cupcake, I don't know if I can show it. It's even got sprinkles on it. <laughs> and then she had a succulent cat or a cactus cat. I still need to go get my nails done, y'all. I'm going to get them done this week, I promise. I can't stand not having them. But anyway, uh, Noelle is very sweet. She's in Texas, and she is a wonderful polymer clay artist. So if you're looking for some adorable, adorable progress keepers, you need to go check out Charmed and Dangerous. Okay. Um, I received in the mail a surprise gift. Stephanie from my local yarn shop, Knit Two Together, knew I was coveting these two uh, yarns from Kim Marie Knit Knacks. And she sent them to me. <laughs> and she wrote me a very sweet note inside of them. And y'all, I am so moved when people do kindness for me. I can't even begin to pay back all the kindness that I have been shown. A lot of it is the result of this podcast. But it just... it. It touches me more than y'all I can ever express verbally. But these two colorways, this one is called Carrots and this one is called Kindred Spirits. And I think that those will make a beautiful two skein shawl. Probably the Tracy. She also sent me these cute little markers for using on uh, DPNs for socks. So um, I think those are sweet. But anyway, so Stephanie... I don't know if you're going to have a chance to watch this because I know you got a lot going on right now, but thank you. Uh, anyway, <laughs> get a little reclamped there. Sorry. Then, as if that wasn't enough kindness, this is after getting Miss Mary's package last week. I got, I had ordered a Chicken Coop Dye Works, had had a one-of-a-kind kind of oopsie skein. And I saw it while I was in Oklahoma, and it was DK weight, and I was just like, oh, that is so beautiful. So I ordered it. And then I get a package, and I'm like, what's going on? There's more than one in there. She sent me two. And I was just blown away. They smell delicious because she puts lavender and all of her stuff. But this is a one-of-a-kind colorway called Porte Chapeau Antique, and it's a one-of-a-kind colorway. Aren't those beautiful? Those colors, man. Those are just amazing. So thank you so much, Caroline. I don't know what else to say, but I I just thank you. I thanked her already personally, but thank you. I'm always um, very touched by kindness. Um, so, but thank you very much. Anybody, I mean, I, ever, and I have had some really wonderful people send, gift me things, and I am just forever grateful. And Antonia's sent me some beautiful gifts. Laura's very generous. People have gifted me patterns. You know, tons of people have gifted me patterns or sent me little surprises in the mail. Miss Mary is, is so sweet to send me things every once in a while. And it seems like these things come on days when you need it most. So it's like there's a psychic connection there that knows... Never needs a little pick me up, and and I y'all I can't even begin to tell you how much all this means to me. Vanessa has sent me that beautiful bag at Christmas time. Y'all just don't know how much that stuff means to me. When I've had kind of a rough day and I get that package, I'm just like, oh, thank you for knowing that people care. Okay, um, the last thing that I will show is actually a was a little bit of an impulse buy, but I do love her yarn, and you saw it in my. Um, in my um, chevron striped scarf. This is another sock set from um, String Theory Color Works. And it's, I'm, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for marketing. <laughs> First of all, the sock set is called Corona, like the sun. <laughs> And it's a stripe, a complex stripe pattern with seven rows of the frozen blue, three rows white, seven rows spearmint, 
three rows white, violet, white, pale pink, orchid, and white. And then you got a, a mini of the spearmint color for heels, toes, and cuffs. This is one of her Inertia sock sets. The Inertia um, colorway is, let's see, where does it tell me what it's made out of? Inertia. Oh, it's 80% merino, so it's 80-20. Man, it's soft. And then, because, you know, I never have too many stitch markers and progress keepers, right? That's, I'm sticking to that theory anyway. I got the stitch marker set that she had on offer with it. It's called the um, Sun Pony set. And I'll tell you why I got it. Well, first of all, it's got the sun and it's got horses. Let's see if I can get that to focus. But there is a crown, a queen's crown in here too. I'm like, yeah, I need that. I fully believe in using things that when you put your hands on them, they inspire you in some way through their names or through their symbolism. There's magic in those stitches. And so I wanted that Phoenix and that queen, that queen's crown for my, for my hands. So, um, so that's all my acquisitions I'm going to show, uh, this week. Um, I kind of feel like that was a lot. So we're going to, we're going to move on now and, um, talk about, um, future, no, I know I did future crafting. Sorry. We're going to move on now and talk about science. <laughs> Okay, as you heard me mention, um, I just got back this last weekend uh, from a trip where we took uh, some students out to the National Severe Storms Lab. A good, good friend of mine, Dr. Ted Mansell, he's a friend of mine from, from grad school. He is a scientist in the federal lab out there, and every two years he is kind enough to help me set up a visit for my students. We have a class called Exper Experiments in Physics. And the purpose of that class is for them to, hang on, Willie, we're going to try to cross our legs without falling backwards off of our stool here. <laughs> uh, the purpose of that class is for students to get to go work with real scientists in a real lab setting where they can uh, see work being done and have maybe some different ideas about um, some of the things that they could do uh, with their physics degree. So, uh, we went to the National Severe Storms Lab and we got a tour of all of the facilities and then we also got to talk with the people who prep the vehicles for the field program where so they build they build the storm chasing vehicles essentially. They take a pickup truck or an SUV and they fit it with things like hail cages and all the instruments and um, all the jacks for the laptops and the computers and the generators to run radars and uh, think, racks to haul instruments on. I mean, it's amazing the process that it goes through. Um, and then we also got to tour the advanced radar facility where they got to learn about all the new things that are happening with radar technology and how they have improved radar technology so much. Um, you know, the new thing that's coming down the pike, you know, first was Doppler radar, which really advanced how um, we predict or how we call tornado warnings, tornado watches and warnings. And um, also now what they have is the dual pole radar, dual polarimeter radar, which means it can not only tell the shape of the object in the X direction, so horizontal, it can also tell the height of the object because it's sending out signals that are basically across, a plus. And that then tells us, is that rain or is that hail or is that snow or is that ice particles? Because those all have distinctive shapes, distinctive morphologies that they can identify with the radar signal. Um, we also got to see the storm, the National Storm Prediction Center where every single weather watch in the lower 48 is issued. There's a team of scientists that works around the clock, switching out every 12 hours. There's a team of scientists that works around the clock, or maybe there's three shifts, but every single watch, tornado watch, thunderstorm watch, winter storm watch, is issued out of that office. Warnings are issued by local uh, agencies because they are there to get the real-time data. 
but the the uh, storm prediction center is the one that issues all the watches and that's pretty cool to think about that's where it all how it all happens um they also got to work with the Mesonet people. The Oklahoma Mesonet is this amazing data collection facility. It's been around for about 10 years. What it is, at 120 locations around the state, they um, have these instrument setups where they collect data every five minutes on everything from air temperature, wind speed, soil moisture at different depths, soil temperature, humidity, all of this data gets collected. And so it's a wonderful way to form climatological models that are then used by a variety of people, everything from construction companies to agricultural product projects to uh, storm prediction and climate prediction um, agencies so it's amazing to see just the huge quantity of data that gets collected out there and to see that in real time um the other thing was is dr mansell ted was kind enough to give us a talk on his research and he researches storm electrification so how lightning is formed in thunderstorms and models that on computer simulations and I have to say, this trip really, if nothing else comes out of this trip, and I'm sure that it will, I have two students, one of whom is a young woman who is incredibly smart, but she kind of just doesn't know what she wants to do next. And so we're trying to encourage her to stay for another year and get her physics minor. And I'm trying to kind of counsel her on where to find some funding for that. But she had said, well, I love data, I love numbers, and I love helping people. And one of the groups out there, it's a forensic meteorology organization or forensic meteorology uh, firm. And what they do is they, you know, most obvious thing that they do is when there's been a, a catastrophic event or there's been an insurance claim, they will go and evaluate the conditions and try to figure out if the weather actually caused this damage. The other thing that they try to do is try to, when there is a catastrophic event that they don't really know what happened, they go and try to look at how it happened and why it happened and how we can better keep people safe and do better storm predicting. And her, when I saw them talk about that, I saw her straighten up and her ears perk up and she just really started listening. And so I think I've got her hooked. I hope so. The other one was just as exciting. I have a young man who... Um, he never gets, he's very smart, but he never gets excited about much of anything. He's just kind of, you know, he's there. He listens and he participates, but he's, you know, there he is. He comes up to me and he says, Dr. Burris, I really think that lightning stuff is interesting and I want to work on that. I about fell out on the floor. I was so excited. So I made sure that as soon as we got back to school, I emailed my friend Ted and I said, you're going to get an email from Austin Jones. Please, please, please work with him because he is very smart and he is excited, and I want him to stay excited. <laughs> I started also working with my student, Luke, who's working on the spectroscopy project, and my other two students, Grace and Carol, uh, my freshman women, and then Luke is getting ready to start his senior year. Um, we're working on a big project, and we actually made a contact um, that we can now get some new data, so that's going to start taking off. And the reason we made that contact and it's a person that I knew, but I kind of forgot that I knew him, <laughs> is while we were in Oklahoma, I was able to have dinner with my PhD advisor, John, John Cowan. And, you know, I owe him everything. I am the reason, he is the reason that I have a PhD. I mean, just plain and simple. And he gets embarrassed when I say that, and he doesn't like me saying that. You know, he, it embarrasses him a little bit, but it's true. Without his guidance and without his mentorship, I would have given up. There were times he drug me kicking and screaming to, toward my PhD, and I owe him that. I owe him that that praise. He, he, he did that. And he got to meet Luke, who was so excited. So to see that come full circle means a lot. And today, you know, it's International Women's Day today. And I was totally surprised when I happened to open my phone up at lunchtime and on Facebook was a post tagging me from a former student who I'm now friends with writing this beautiful thing about how I had inspired her and I had helped her. And she wanted, she knew when she met me, she wanted to be the kind of woman I was. And y'all, I just have no words. <laughs> 
but I, 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 I hope that I'm, I'm doing John's legacy proud because he has meant the world to me and to see that post from Renee today meant the world to me to know that I have paid forward the, the what he did for me to these next generation of, of people and I hope I can continue to do that. When I can't do that anymore, I, I don't feel like I want to do that anymore, then it's time to quit teaching. But I don't feel that way yet. And so, um, you know, and John, we're his kids. You know, uh, all of us that worked for him, we're his kids. And it was just so wonderful to see him and to see how uh, he's feeling. You know, he lost his wife a few years ago, and I was really worried about him for a while. But he's doing a lot better now, and I'm... I'm I'm just so thankful to have had him as an advisor. A good advisor makes all the difference. All the difference. So when Jeremy told me thank you the other day for helping him, or Renee posts that today, or Lou gets excited, or Monica gets excited, or, or Austin gets excited, I, I, I hope that I'm living up to his legacy. That's what we're supposed to do, right? Um, so um, that's... I did meet with my, uh, I, I, will have, I will add one last little thing. I am a minority faculty mentor this year where I mentor a minority faculty member who is working on their, um, working toward tenure. And I got to meet with her on uh, Monday and we had a great visit. I just love Lisa. We just click so well and I'm so grateful for that. But we did a little activity because she was, you know, asking for what I thought about something. I said, well, let's do it this way. Let's, 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 I'm, I'm not going to answer your question. I'm going to let you answer it. And I had a friend a long time ago do this with me. And I have done this occasionally with my classes. And it's a really great exercise. If you're ever kind of stuck and don't know what your next move is, you take a sheet of paper and you just write one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, multiple times. So like a listing, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three down the side of the piece of paper. And then you have your friend ask you these three questions. What is it that you really want? That's the first question. What are you willing to give up to get it? That's the second question. And what do you hope to achieve by getting it? So the first time they ask you that question, they pause for you know a minute or two and let you really think. Then they ask you the question again and they pause for a shorter time. And then they ask you again and it's shorter. And by the fifth or sixth time that they're asking you that question, it's what is it that you really want? What is what do you hope what are you going to give up to get it? And what do you hope to achieve by getting it? You have to be able to really you know, whatever is coming from your soul. You can't overthink it. Because what we do is we sit there and we think about what the answer ought to be instead of what is really in our heart and soul. And then we talked about it. And, you know, I have always found that to be a wonderful exercise to get past the what does society think I should be and what does society think I should look like or be or make or do or whatever and get down to the root of what is that person? What is that person about? So if you're ever kind of stuck, I really suggest that is a great exercise. So that's all we're going to talk about for science I'm going to link a whole bunch of cool science video, science ladies in the description. So if you want to know more about all these different wonderful women scientists, um, you'll, you can go there. And what I may do is do a little short uh, video of some of my favorites and a little short bio of them. So if y'all are interested in seeing that video, let me know in the comments if you're still with me and haven't fallen asleep. Uh, <laughs> let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll do a little short Women's History Month, my favorite scientists that you've never heard of video. So, or maybe never heard of. So, okay. All right, we're gonna move on now and talk about fun. <music>
Okay, the first thing I want to talk about right off the bat in Farm Life is a really cool program that you can get involved with from the Livestock Conservancy. The Livestock Conservancy is a group dedicated to preservation of endangered and historic breeds of livestock. Everything from ducks and geese and chickens to sheep and cattle and horses, donkeys, goats, it's all there. And they're a great organization and I really... One of my long-term goals with the farm is to host or is to own specific breeds of animals that are part of this preservation effort. But how can you get involved and how can I get involved as a fiber artist? They are starting a program called Shave Em to Save Em. And it is a program where they are making a passport program. And I got the, I saw Kim Marie on Instagram post about this and I immediately went and signed up. You sign up for a $15 donation. They are a nonprofit, a 5013C, I believe. And so technically it's a donation that you can write off if you need to. But you get a passport and then when you purchase um, yarns of these specific breeds, you get a stamp and you can redeem those things for items. So, uh, and you can share pictures of your projects on Facebook and Ravelry. I'm going to link the page to this, but some of the different breeds that they want you to use are, the critical breeds are the Florida Cracker, the Gulf Coast or Gulf Coast Native, Hog Island, and Santa Cruz. I've never heard of any of those. I've actually heard of Florida Cracker Sheep. But if you go to the Livestock Conservancy page and click on them, they usually provide you links to people. They've got lists of um, providers of yarn and fleece that you can purchase from. In the threatened species, there's Black Welsh Mountain, Clune Forest, Cotswold, Dorset Horn, Jacob American, Caracool American, Lester Longwool, Lincoln, Navajo Churro, Rommeldale CVM, and St. Croix. Then in Watch, these different levels are um, are different levels of um, based on population numbers and breeding populations. Uh, critical is the most highly endangered. Um, the Barbado Barbados Black Belly, Oxford Shropshire, Shropshire, Tunis, and Wiltshire Horn are the Watch breeds, and then Recovering are Shetland and South Down. So the program gives you uh, your conservation priority list and it connects you to shepherds on this breeds list. And so you can uh, buy wool from rare breed fiber providers and get a stamp in the passport. Then you earn items for completing projects on in the passport. And the more breeds they, that you use, the more stamps you earn and the more items you earn and the more wool the providers sell. So, um, there will be a list of fiber providers online where you can go and find uh, products based on your zip code or just wherever you want to order from. Right now, it's only available to participants in the in the United United States, but maybe they'll make it international. But it, for fifteen dollars, I think I'm a sucker for passport programs. I've done every passport program that I've ever gotten. The national parks, state parks. Heritage Commission, I'm a sucker, and this is a great way to support fiber producers of unique and interesting breeds while helping preserve those breeds. Uh, trust me, it's hard to make it as a farmer, so the Save em, Shave Them to Save Them program, I really encourage you to get involved with that if you can. Uh, my passport ought to be here next week, and I can't wait. Okay, so... Um, Next we, or next thing I want to talk about um, is situation at the barn that I had kind of alluded to earlier, and the young woman has decided that she needs to move on to another program, which is great. I'm happy for her. Um, you know, it's hard to see your the kids move on and leave you, but she is wanting to do more advanced training, and that is not what the Rainbow Rider program does. So uh, she has moved on. Um, I hated to see her go, but... Um, I hope, I wish her all the best. You know, kids come and kids go, you know. Here we go again. We'll see if they'll be quiet. Guess not. Anyway, maybe they're done now. <laughs> 
kids, it's always bittersweet to see the kids come and go from the program, but I'm proud that they're moving on to the direction that they want to go. Um, I've got my hay paid off, so that's exciting. I've paid the property taxes on the farm. Um, I'm getting ready to buy myself a chainsaw, so that'll be exciting. Um, gearing up for spring break is, uh, got my act, some of my pro little projects that I want to get done. I'm thinking about doing a farm vlog and kind of telling y'all, like vlogging every day for spring break and kind of giving y'all some of the history of the farm because I know we've got some new viewers that are interested. So if y'all think that that would be interesting, let me know. Um, Willie hurt his back. You know, I had mentioned a couple of weeks ago that he wasn't feeling very good. And then while I was gone to Oklahoma, my friend Kathy said, you know, he's just off. I don't know if he's just missing you, but he's off. And so when I got back, we actually got back earlier than we anticipated. So I was able to take him to the vet Saturday morning. And as long back dogs are prone to do, uh, he hurt his back. I guess they were playing on the bed and he fell off the bed and kind of pinched a disc or did something. You know, the vet was very quick to give him a, gave him a steroid shot and gave him some anti-inflammatories and he's back to his usual self here. But, um, you know, it's something that I need to be mindful of. So I've actually bought a bed step for both him and for feathers to use to get up and down off the bed because I'm getting ready to get a new mattress and box spring. And so they'll need that step again. Um, as you heard in the opening credits, uh, we have a new member at the farm. We have Penny the pig. We have Penny the potbelly pig. Um, as often happens with potbelly pigs, people get them. They don't realize that they're going to get bigger when you start feeding them correctly. And they get too big. And then she's not huge. She's still small, but she's bigger than, you know, you can't carry her around in your purse. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. And uh, she's very sweet. She's very well behaved. Um, she needed some, some care, though. Her skin was very dry. She had ticks. She had ear mites. So I've taken care of all of that. And uh, she is quite happy now. Uh, I'm getting ready to fix her a little house. Um, I've got a dog house that I need to try to get moved. I tried to move it by myself and it didn't go very well. So I've got to go out there with some uh, some ratchet straps and try to strap it onto the front end loader on my tractor. My poor tractor needs a bunch of work done to it. It's got a, I think the valve stem is leaking on the tire because one of my big tires is going flat. One of my hydraulic cylinders is leaking. It needs new hydraulic hoses. So I've got to show it a little tender love and care here coming up pretty soon. Um, it's been incredibly cold here the last few days. The trip to Oklahoma was so cold. It was supposed to have warmed up and it didn't do it. So it has been incredibly cold here and it is finally starting to warm up and the days are getting perceptibly longer and we spring forward this weekend and I'm so excited because then that means it's going to be daylight in the evenings when I get home from work and that makes me so happy. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm starting to see some signs of life out there. The trees are starting to get ready to bloom. Uh, the jonquils are blooming. The hen bit and the uh, chickweed is blooming like, or is not blooming, but it's coming up like crazy. The bees are getting more active. Um, so, you know, things are, things are starting to wake up around here on the farm and I'm so glad. I, I enjoy all seasons, but winter is very hard on my spirit and I'm always glad when we get to the end of winter. So, um... Yeah, so that is kind of all that's going on on the farm. I hope you'll check out Critter Chat if you want to learn more about Penny. She's on there. Um, and um, check out the tutorial on canning broth if you are interested in that. So I hope that those are the kinds of things that people are interested in. And Willie says thank you for all the well wishes for everybody that wished him good getting well soon wishes. We're happy that he's doing better. So I'm going to uh, end farm chat there and we're going to move on with a few final thoughts. Okay, um, so I was at uh, Goodwill, and I found this little book. It's called The Little Book of Big Freedoms, and it was put out by Amnesty International. And it is a book that is based on the um, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in, on December 10th. 1948, after the world's experience in World War II. Uh, world leaders decided to create a document that would guarantee the rights of individuals everywhere, and Eleanor Roosevelt um, chaired the committee, who I'm a big fan of Eleanor Roosevelt. So this book was inspired by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So 
uh, it's a children's book and it says the words in this pictures in this book are about humans rights human rights human rights are freedoms that we are all entitled to we may not have our own line to guard us or a pegasus to wrap its wings around us but these rights are guaranteed to all of us children and grown-ups just because we are human this book shows us why our human rights are imp so important so um I thought I would show y'all some of this. Uh, this is by Chris Riddell, and he writes a little forward. It says, we all want a good life, to have fun, to be safe and happy and fulfilled. For this to happen, we need to look after one another. In this book, there are 16 different freedoms that help us do that. They are truly wonderful and precious things. These freedoms were created to protect us forever. We need to stand up for them and look after them just as they look after us. And then I have drawn some pictures for you. Each one of them shows our freedoms. I hope you like them. So the first one is life. We all have a right to live. And then the next one is protection. No one has the right to hurt or torture us. Then freedom. Nobody has the right to make us a slave. We cannot make in a, make someone else a slave or force them to work for us. Safety. No one has the right to imprison us without a good reason. They have to tell us that reason and let us say why we should be set free. Fairness. Fairness says if we are put on trial, we must be treated fairly. Nobody can blame us for doing something bad until it is proved. The people who try us must not, must not let anyone else tell them what to do. Justice. You can't be punished for some, doing something wrong if there was no law against it when you did it. Family. We have the right to live with our family and to live our lives in the way we choose. The government must respect our privacy. Belief. We all have the right to think or believe whatever we like, to have a religion, and to show it. Thought. We all have the right to take the information we need to the information we need to make up our own minds. We have the right to say what we think and to share ideas with other people. Togetherness. We all have the right to spend time with other people, to get together, and to look after one another. Love. Every grown-up has the right to marry and to have a family if they want to. Solidarity. We all have the same rights. Nobody can take them away or give us different ones because of who we are or because we are different from them. Ownership. Everybody has the right to own and share things. Nobody should take our things away without a good reason. Knowledge. We all have the right to learn. Hope. We all have the right to take part in running our country. Every grown-up should be allowed to say who they want to be their leader. And last but not least is mercy. No one isn't allowed to end our lives even if we did something very bad. So, the little book of big freedoms. You can find some little gems in the thrift store from time to time. So, I'm going to leave you with those thoughts and um, ruminate on those and how we act on those things and how we take part in our freedoms and how we make sure everyone has freedom. So, until I see y'all again, y'all be good to each other and y'all take care of each other. Oh. What did we knock down, Willie? What did we knock down? And until we see y'all again,
Peace out, y'all. Bye. What'd you say? <laughs> Bye.